Alrighty, so welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! So in this video, this is part four, I'll be talking tips and tricks, I'll be talking about breaking down complicated effects and chains. So first of all, let's summarize what I said in part three so that you so before we get to part four. So remember what I said about activation conditions. So activation conditions, I'll repeat the quote that I said again, which is there's no such thing as bad cards. Only there are only activation conditions on cards that prevent them. And that's it. And you know, you can go to part three, uh, you know, to get a rundown and you know of activation conditions again. Now I'm going to go over you know part four, which is the breaking down of complicated effects and chains. But before we get to that, let me before now I'm gonna get to that now. And what I want to say is that when it comes to complicated effects, they all have something in common. Complicated effects come back to, again, what I said in part two, keywords. Now, what makes co uh, effects complicated is when they have multiple keywords. When they have once per turn and then in brackets, quick effect, you know, things like that. Or they have, you know, a summon condition and then, you know, the, and then, you know, the active, you know, they have a summon condition and then they have an activation condition. So you've got to remember, whenever you have a monster, monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah, usually have two conditions. They have a summon condition, and then they have an activation condition, yeah? These are the things that make, uh, you know, complicated effects complicated, because they have these two conditions. Now, you always remember, as I've said before, that your summon condition is always going to be on the first sentence of every effect text in every monster that you find you know you're always going to find it there without exceptions whenever you're doing a whenever monster has a summon condition you will always find it in the first sentence of every monster effect okay if yeah so this is these are the things that make um, you know, effects complicated because it, it kind of gets you confused, right? You're sort of like, oh my god, first I've got to do the summon condition first, and then we go to the activation condition, and then we oh it's so confusing, what do I do? But in despair, don't worry, as your Yu-Gi-Oh sensei that's here, I'm here to guide you, I'm there to make it less confusing. So you've got to remember that. And uh, here's where the keywords come into play. So, whenever there's a summon condition on a monster, the words when and if are used, you know? This goes without fire, yeah? So, let's say, for example, we have a card like, you know, Ningirisu, right? Ningirisu has an on-summon effect, you know? And its effect state, you know, and one of those effects is, is that, you know, when, when, you know, when it is linked summoned, you know? And it points to two chalice monsters you get to draw two cards, you see? So that's, there is an example. So you see the word when is used there. So always remember that whenever a monster has a summon condition, every monster that has a summon condition, sorry, will always have to use the word, use the keywords when and if. And when when and if is used in terms of summon condition, you know, in terms of that, that's what you apply first. Always, always apply the summon condition first before you apply the activation condition. Yeah, it's very, very important. I will give an example, you know, of that, you know, soon. Okay, so let's just go to the example now. Complicated effects. Remember, activation conditions can only be done when cards meet their activation requirements. Complicated effects have several indicators telling they are so. 1. Multiple keywords. 2. Having a summon condition with an activation condition. 3. Multiple activation conditions. Versatility. Let's go through the indicators in detail. 1. Multiple keywords. You will find instances of this with cards having text like once per turn quick effect. It's very normal to see multiple keywords on a monster. The general rule is if one of those keywords is in brackets, that keyword applies, not the one before it. 2. Summon condition. It's always 
found in the first two sentences in the effect text, while activation condition is found near the key words. 3. There are times the effect of the card present given, the type of card, it, it is allows multiple activation conditions. An example of this phenomenon is infinite impermanence. While it's a trap, meaning it can be set, it can also be alternatively be activated from the hand if you control new cards. So now I'm going to talk about chains. I've obviously shown the example for, you know, the complicated effects, and I'm going to be talking about chains. So when it comes to chaining, this is where Yu-Gi-Oh! can really get very extremely confusing. Now, Konami really hasn't given, you know, proper ways of really explaining chaining. They usually say like, you know, like, you know, you chain backwards, you know. So the last thing that, the last effect that activated is what you do. So for example, when you have four effects. So the fourth effect that was activated, right? So the fourth one, um, that's what you act, that's what you go to and activate that first and you go the third, second, fourth, so you work backwards. But this can get very confusing sometimes because especially when you play an average game, maybe when the game first started it's fine, but now in 2021, now in the Yu-Gi-Oh state right now, you know like you can get chains of up to eight effects, up to double digits, it's pretty normal, it's pretty standard and this can be very confusing remembering all these chains, remembering all these effects, right? this is just overwhelming and that's and to be realistic like to get someone to remember all of that can just be a little bit much so how do we make such things easier how as your Yu-Gi-Oh sensei how will i uh will i teach you this skill and how are you going to you know overcome this you know this is going to be your biggest obstacle to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh master well Remember what I said in part three, and this comes down to activation conditions, right? Activation conditions are here to save the day. Yes, my friends. Yes, my fellow students. Activation conditions are here to save the day. Allow me to explain. Remember, as I said before, that every single mon every single monster in Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, except non-effect and normal monsters, have an activation condition. Now, this is important, right? This is important. Now, why is this important? Because whenever a chain is conducted, a chain is conducted when monster effects have been successfully activated, right? So, chain. So, a simple chain is like I activate an effect, my opponent activates an effect. That's chain one, right? Very simple, very easy. You're with me so far? Good. And so then we have chain two, is where I activate an effect, my opponent activates an effect, and then I activate an effect to counter the effect they just activated. You see, this gets a little bit confusing, and this is what can happen in Yu Gi Oh! sometimes. You know, I counter you, you counter me, and this counter countering can just continue and go on and on and on and on and, on and can never end. And this is where it can just get, oh my days, what do we do? But here's where we stop. Here's where I'll tell you to stop. Freeze frame. And just think about the activation condition. So look at it again and ask yourself the questions. The one question is, what is the activation condition of the cards on the field? That is the one question that you need to ask yourself. Whenever you look at a card, right? ask yourself this question. What is the activation condition of that card? And remember, you will always find the activation condition of every card in Yu-Gi-Oh! when you look at the keywords, right? Not the, uh, the keywords in terms of the activation condition. Yeah, not its summon condition, no, no, no. It's activation condition, completely different. And the activation condition will be found from the bottom, as I said before, from, you know, you read from the bottom up. So that's where you find the activation condition. Now that you you be, become really good at reading cards and it's, gonna, and it's taking you two sentences to read these cards as you followed my previous tips and tricks videos and you practiced, practiced, and practiced, and practiced, and practiced and now that you gained this level of, uh, you know, of reading that now you're a speed reader. Yeah? This should be fairly easy for you. So once you look at an average card and you find, you know, you find, right, you find the... 
uh, you know, the, the keywords there. This is where, right, you look at that type and then look at its activated condition and, you know, and just and look at it and look at the situation and say like, and ask that question again. Is, you know, is this card's activation condition being prevented, you know? If it isn't, ignore it and carry on. And this is what you need to be doing. You need to be ignoring, you know, effects that can activate. When it comes to chaining, what's important is only asking one question and one question only. Do cards meet their activation conditions? If they do not, then move on until you move to a card that does meet its activation condition and you start from there. This, this is the automatic way of being able to chain, do chaining in Yu-Gi-Oh! effectively. It never fails, right? So when we get the situations of, you know, you're activating effect, your opponent activating effect, things like that, you don't, don't be focused on the effects that are floating about. You want to be focused on and asking one simple question and asking this question over and over again, you know? What is the activation condition of the cards on the field? You know, does any card on the field meet its activation condition? If your answer is no, then you move to cards that do meet the activation condition. Remember, it's not about the effects floating on the field. It's about their activation condition. Uh, you, this is where you need to... This is where, like, you is a vocal game. You is a game that you need to be communicating with your opponent. So when there are effects floating about, either you've activated them or your opponent's activated them, this is where you need to ask the question and ask, you know, in the game state. This is why it's very important to, to you know, follow, you know, not, not really follow the game state, but follow, you know, the state of the game and ask your opponent, you know? Ask them a simple question. So when your opponent activates an, uh, an effect, you know, let's say you activate an effect. Let's give an example. You activate, you know, a card like, you know, Emergency Teleport. Emergency Teleport has the ability to special summon a level 3 or lower psychic from your hand or deck. So here's where you would ask your opponent, you know, do they, do you, can you prevent? Do you have a response, you know? Uh, why is it important to say this? When you say, do you have a response? You're basically asking, do they have a way to prevent your activation condition, right? And if they answer yes, then that's where you then, you then let them activate their effect. And obviously you leave your, you leave your uh, effect aside. So for example, let's say your opponent responds by activating Ash Blossom, right? This hand trap. Now Ash Blossom is a level three zombie fire type that has the ability to stop a special summon from your from the opponent's deck right so already and be, and so you already your opponent has the negated has you know prevented the activation condition of emergency teleport that you just activated because your player one player two has responded we shall say by activating ash blossom and so they negate you know the ability of you as you know as you play one of activating ash blossom you see this is very simple right very simple very easy not confusing and this is what you need to be doing this is what you need to do always ask you know do you have a response you know to this do you have a response to this effect you know do you have a response do you have a response do you have a response it's important to be asking this question whenever you're doing whenever you're dwelling sorry in Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! is a vocal game, making sure that everything that is said is vocal is important. What's important in Yu-Gi-Oh! is to always to be asking this question, right? Ask the question like, do you have a response? You know, or better yet, if you, but I think the best way to do it, and what I usually do is ask is like, does your card prevent my card's activation condition? And if the answer is yes, then if you don't have a response to their card, which sometimes you do not, but if you do, then you'd activate your cards and 
as a response. And then that's where it, the same question will be repeated again, where your opponent would ask the same question to you. Do you have a card in which, do you have a card that prevents my card's activation condition? Because remember, this is what's important. This is what matters, right? What matters is activation condition. And what matters is that you always, as a player, need to be asking that question. Does this card prevent my card's activation condition? That's it. So now I'm going to offer you know, an example of that as you see. Chains. Chains can get complicated the more there is. It can feel overwhelming at times. So many effects happening at the same time. And the way Konami explains it can make it even more confusing. So how do we make it easier? Well, my fellow students, this is where the activation condition I was talking about in part 3 comes in. Chains. Player 1 activates this spell. Player 2 responds to the spell by negating with this. Player 1 responds to the monster activation to negate that monster. Chains. This cycle of chaining can keep going on and on till a resolution is found. Now, keeping track of all of this can get confusing, especially when chains are more than three. But here is where we use the method of activation condition to make this matter simple. You only need to ask one question. Does the card meet its activation condition? That's the question you keep asking, not following all these chains. Repeating the question allows the situation immediately to become simpler. Cause with this question you ask, what will become apparent is not the chaining, but are the effects meeting the activation conditions. In the scenario shown earlier, when you ask this question, you will instantly know that Call by the Grave is the only card you need to pay attention to. All chains in Yu-Gi-Oh are the same. What's important is do cards meet their activation condition. This gets you into a good Yu-Gi-Oh habit of not having useless information and making decisions quickly. So remember, when you enter a chain-like scenario in Yu-Gi-Oh, just ask the question, do the cards present meet the activation conditions? If the answer is no, then you ignore all things on the field, only pay attention to effects that are able to successfully resolve, not the ones that cannot resolve. It's just that simple. So I think that's about it. I think I've covered all there is to cover, you know, in this section in part 4. Now, this may not seem much. What I'm saying here may not seem like much, may seem like I'm retreading old ground, but it's important to get the foundation right. And this is where I, I have stressed out, where activation condition is extremely important and is something that you need to master and you need to know. When you're going to higher levels of play, when you're going to you want to become a Yu-Gi-Oh master, which is, which is I assume is what you want to be doing, right? This is, will be your journey. This will be the first step. Remember, activation condition answers all questions. Nothing is hidden from activation condition. You know, you don't need to be remembering about, oh, you know, um, this chain, that chain, this effect, that effect. That's not important. What's that's not important? What's important is not remembering all these effects that are floating on the board, all these abilities. No, you need to focus on the here and now. That's uh, usually my take when I play Yu-Gi-Oh. I never focus on when it comes to chaining. You know, I ignore all of that. I ignore all the, oh, you know, like you've chained this effect, you know, to this effect, you've chained this effect to this effect. You know, I've activated this, you've activated that. Like no. Always treat it. The key thing here is treat things, treat things as one to one. So treat it as you know what is currently happening right here, right now. So if there's one effect, uh, one effect happening, and your opponent responds, you concentrate on that. Don't concentrate on multiple things, on multiple effects. Focus on a one to one. Uh, basis. Always treat effects on a one-to-one -one basis and always ask just the same question over and over and over and over again, you know? Like, repeat, you know, yeah, repeat that process of asking that same question over and over. Get into that Yu-Gi-Oh habit of asking, does this card, you know, prevent my cards activation condition get into make that into a Yu-Gi-Oh habit you know this is one of the habits that you need to you know 
accustom yourself with. So I've been talking about habits, you know, before. So habit number one is no cards by their color. I said this in Yu-Gi-Oh Tips and Tricks Part One, Part. You don't only about color, but no cards by their color. My goal as a Yu-Gi-Oh Sensei is by the end of these tips and tricks videos, you will be play Yu-Gi-Oh efficiently. You will not be reading as much. You will only be reading two sentences per card. By the time I'm done with you students, you will be a better player. Maybe you won't be a better uh, Yu-Gi-Oh master, but you will be a better player because you'll be playing more efficiently. You'll be getting the most value of when, when you see a card. And that's really what I'm here as a Yu-Gi-Oh Sensei at the end of the day. I'm here to give you these skills so that Yu-Gi-Oh isn't so intimidating, right? It isn't so scary. <laughs> yeah, don't be spared. Remember that knowing cards, first of all, one, know cards by their color. Two, understand that keywords are present in all Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Mo memorize them, as I've stated in previous tips and tricks videos. And three, learn the law of activation condition. Embrace it, accept it and use it for yourself. These are the three things that you need to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Color, keywords, and activation condition. Everything else? Really? You don't need it. You, you, don't, you, you don't need it. You really don't. Uh, here's me being honest with you. You really don't need it. Keep it to these. Yeah? You need... When you keep things to these three points that I've covered, then... You will be a better player, and the game will be so much easier. You'll be more effective. And that's it, really. And that's all I've got to say about this. Okay? Yeah. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a...